Hey guys, Adam here again, um, working on the uh, roller project again. I'm, I want to uh, go ahead and get the bolt pattern finished up and the bearing plate. So uh, that's what I'm going to do today. I've already got it set up in the mill. I've got to put the same hole pattern as I did in the, in the roller. And I've got to just drill it and countersink it. Uh, I've already got it indicated and uh, got it offset the way I need for the uh, five and three quarter bolt pattern. I didn't show you that because I've already done it once already. Uh, so, I mean, you already kind of know how, how I've done it. You can see I've got it set up in the super spacer. I've already got uh, two spots, 180 out to make sure that I was on my correct hole pattern and it's there. So I'm gonna go ahead with it and uh, start drilling and countersinking for the Allen flathead style bolt. I like to countersink them to where the, the heads are just flushed or just under the face there. I think what I'll do, instead of countersinking each one as I drill the hole, I'm going to go ahead and, and drill all the holes and then I'll put the countersink tool back in there and set my uh, stop on the uh, quill here. That way I can just make them all the same. All right, starting off at zero, we're gonna go 45. If it starts getting a little noisy in the background, that's because I got my fans on. It's about 90 degrees and it's hot and humid. I gotta have a little air moving on me. Go to ninety. One thirty five.
180. All right, 225. Two seventy. Three fifteen. Back to zero. I'm doing I'm just going to run the uh, the quill all the way down against the stop collar and I'm going to raise the table up to meet the height here that I need and then whenever I cut it all I got to do is just bring it down down to the, uh, the stop collar there Pretty good there. I'm gonna rotate it and do them all the same.
That's it. be all about the same. All I gotta do is just take it out and just hit the bottom of the holes where I drill through and I'll probably just do that here with do it by hand. good. I'm going to get it cleaned off and uh, we'll go see if it fits. Alright, so we got the bearing plate drilled, countersunk, for the Allen flathead bolts. And I'm going to go ahead and test fit it, see how it fits. Hopefully it'll bolt up just like it's supposed to. I did want to point out I've got a little bit of surface rust appearing on the finish. That's just from sitting out here in the shop. I don't have AC. I don't have climate control. So I have to keep stuff oiled and I didn't do a good job of keeping oil on them. Uh, I will after today though. I'm going to keep them oiled down. But I'll probably chuck it back up in the lathe and just give it another quick final polish before I uh, assemble it. You can see on the roller I got a little bit of surface rust there also. Not a big deal, but it kind of bugs me. So we're gonna go ahead and see how it, how it fits. Tell you what, I'll, I'm gonna pull you in a little closer so you can so you can see it a little better. All right, they look like they line up good. Looks like they're all going to go in there like they're supposed to. Get, get started by hand. That's it, they all fit. The bolt pattern came out right. Not too bad for uh, using a, a super spacer and just indexing it, indicating with a uh, cheap coax indicator. We'll go ahead and tell you what, we'll go ahead and try this uh, dust plate on the back side while we're at it.
looks like they line up. It fits. Everything's fitting right. Just the uh, grease fitting goes here. That's basically what it'll look like. I didn't stick the wiper in there, but that's about what it's going to look like whenever it's completed. All right, well, what I've got to do, I've still got to make the plate that's going to bolt to this end of the shaft. And I meant to cut a piece of stock at work this week, and I actually forgot about it because I was busy. But I found a piece of stock that I think I can use. This is a piece of stock here that I've found in the shop. It's three inches, which is what I wanted. It's a little thick. I took a face cut on there just to kind of see what it was. I want to make sure it wasn't cast iron, but it's steel. I don't know what grade it is. I think it's some kind of maybe 4140 because it's putting out them little fine blue chips. So I think I'm going to use this piece and face it and, uh, you know, drill the hole pattern in it to bolt here. So. I'm probably going to go ahead and get started on this and, and get this last piece finished up for the shaft. And the only other thing left is just to get the uh, bearing race and the two bearings from the customer. He actually has those and he's supposed to be dropping them off. And I'll probably uh, do like a final assembly for my last video, just, you know, installing everything and torquing it down. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on this. I got one side faced off. It's uh, it's about five eighths thick now with this area on it. I'm gonna bring it down to three eighths of a thick thickness. And one of the things I was gonna say that I love about this chuck is that you can take these jaws off. And when you're making disc like this, you can just butt it right up against the chuck, and you've still got enough jaw there to hold it. It's great for making thin disc.
around 400 thick. I'm just going to take 25 thousandths. All right, let's see how close we are. I'd say that's three eighths. Just using calipers ain't nothing critical. Show you what I like about the multi fix. I want to put a chamfer here. Just rotate the tool around. Makes it quick and easy. I'm going to drill a center hole in the center and I'm probably just going to have that there and use it to uh, line up in the middle for my hole pattern. Got it faced and now it's ready to put the holes in it. Okay, I got the disc and the super spacer. I still got this set from doing the uh, bearing plate just a little while ago. It's still offset, the uh, two and seven eighths. And what I'm gonna do is hand crank it back to uh, zero and see if I can't line up on that center hole again. Feels pretty good. Yeah, both about the same. Alright, let's get it out. And just hit the back side. I'll just do that by hand again. That's it. We get it cleaned off and uh, we'll see if she fits. Okay, so here's the washer that's going to go to the end of the shaft here. This is that piece of steel that I just found laying around the shop, some stuff that I had. I believe it's 4140 or some kind of grade like that because 
you can see the finish it's real nice they had those real fine chips coming off of it and it cut good so that's great because I know this is going to be a good strong piece for this it's going to bolt right here using those same 3 8 allen bolts it looks like they line up fine That's it. So I believe we're ready to put it together now. I've just got to get with my customer. He's got the bearings and the bearing race that's going in here. He's supposed to be bringing them to me this week. And once I do, I'll start putting all this together. And uh, I'll just make a final video of how I put it together and then what it looks like when it's when it's all bolted together. Look for conversation shape. I wanted to show you an old one. Here is an old wheel. You can see the wear. This is how it wears and is why they, they want new ones made. Uh, he, I've asked him before about maybe just trying to refurbish these, but he wasn't interested. He said he'd rather have a new one to put on. He likes for me to have a new roller assembly built and ready. He has it on his shelf whenever he's ready to swap this out. He takes the old one off and puts the new one on. It's just a sacrificial part, and lucky for me, I get to make them. But you can see how the wear is, and uh, this is actually the dust cap side right here. And another reason why I reduced the diameter of the actual dust cap and the bolt pattern because he was having problems with the wear, and it would pop those things off. So I reduced that down to so that it would eliminate breaking those plates off of there. Of course, this is uh, the uh, the bearing plate side. But a while back, the first time he started bringing them, there was somebody else that was building these before I before he uh, found me and I started doing it. But I've got a few of the uh, the old bearing plates that I had taken off some of the old rollers, and you can see that it was originally a four bolt style, and they weren't holding up; they were popping off. So he would, somebody, I don't know who would, they'd go in and actually just try to weld it on. That's one there. Here's another one. Same thing, they've gone in and tried to weld it on. And whoever was doing the machine work, I think did a pretty shitty job. You can see that this counter bore inside here, it just, it just looks shitty. And there's a groove cut in here, and I don't know, maybe they were putting an O-ring in there to help seal it, but that doesn't even look like the right kind of groove to be cut for an O-ring. It just, it just looks like shit. But I don't know, that's just assumption. Because whenever I started doing, there was no seal or no O-ring or anything in here. That's why I actually started going to this rod wiper. Helps keep the stuff from getting in there. This is one more that I had saved that somebody else has built in the past. This one's got a little bit better groove cut in there, but the shaft wore into it. And of course it's got the four holes where mine, the newer style has the eight holes in there. So that's that, I just thought I'd share that with you because uh, I know some people are probably just curious about it and, and what it's used for. Uh, but that's it. So, that's all the parts. Got all the parts made. And I'm just ready to put it together. And I'll be back with you whenever I go to, to uh, put everything together and assemble it.
See you.